بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته This is Yasser Burjaz from Maghrib Institute You come into the masjid after Salat al-Asr and you pray to rak'ah then you sit down Someone comes to you and tells you What did you do? You shouldn't be praying anything after Salat al-Asr It's time prohibition Say so I didn't know that Then some other time you come to the masjid and then you sit down and you open a mushaf reading from the Quran Someone else comes to you and says, shouldn't you be praying two rak'ah before you sit down? Because the Prophet ﷺ said that you shouldn't be pray, sitting down in the masjid when you enter a masjid unless you pray two rak'ah. Now you get really, really confused. You go and ask an imam or a shaykh or a teacher of fiqh, then you get multiple opinions. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala said so, Imam Malik said something else, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad, Ahul Hadith and so on. Great Muslim scholars had different opinions in regard to the particular issue, to the, to the exact same issue. And it becomes really, really confusing. So how should we understand all these issues of fiqh? And as a teacher of fiqh, as an imam at the same time in my community, many people when they come asking questions, their main concern is halal, haram, right, wrong, and they ask particularly questions related to the subject of fiqh. But they don't know what we call it behind the scene how these great ulama and imams, they formulated these opinions. It makes it very easy and simple for people to follow these opinions if they can just make sense of them by understanding how these, how these schools of thoughts were formulated and how these opinions were actually were, uh, uh, were made by these great ulama and great scholars of Islam. In my class, they coded, inshallah wa ta'ala, I'm going to explain this. We're going to explain how these ulama, although they have used the exact same source, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but they still gave different opinions, different interpretations to that exact same text. That's what we call it decoded, that is what is behind the scene and insha'Allah wa ta'ala in this class it's going to be an eye-opening for the average Muslim, it's going to be an intellectual, an intellectual experience for the student of knowledge and I guarantee you it's going to be a spiritual and social retreat for all because we're going to be living the life of the great imams and geniuses of Islam throughout the history of 1400 years. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.